Hi, I'm Chris English. I'm a quilt maker based in Huddersfield, West Yorkshire. Um, I make my quilts from primarily recycled material. Um, I don't follow the rules too much and I just like getting a result. I think getting something done is better than perfect. So yeah, that's me. Uh, today we're going to be making something like this. So it's like an improv um, quilted cushion cover. We're going to use some recycled material. We're going to use a fat quarter and then we're going to hand quilt it and machine quilt it for some added texture. Uh, we'll do the back as well and um, yeah, we'll talk through that. So, the first stage is to collect your fabric. Now, I'm going to use these two shirts and ideally you want the shirts to be a similar size because that is crucial when we make the back of the cushion. Um, and then, for the third fabric, I've got this like um, kind of a yellowy fluorescent one and it's just an old fat quarter that I had. So, you need two shirts and another piece of fabric that's roughly fat quarter sized. So, to start, we're going to deconstruct the shirt. Now, to deconstruct the shirt, very simply, you're going to cut down the seams. So, find the seam and just cut down the seam. Now, you, on a straight seam, you can give it a bit of a tear, just to speed things up. Then when you get to a bit of a curve, just um, trim around it. Now, you don't need to be too precise because the edges of the fabric are going to be lost in different seams and stuff. So, that doesn't matter too much. Right, so then you are left, now this is important, you are left with the front half of a shirt. You need two shirts where, if they're a similar size, then automatically the buttons should match up. And you can just easily check by just kind of um, doing the buttons up. You can, you'll see that it'll work. Now I like my cushions to be quite plump, for want of a better word. This is going to form the back of your cushion. So, do that, and then set that to one side. So, with the rest of the shirt, continue deconstructing it. So, chop the sleeves off. Now, we're going to use the sleeves to create the strips that are going to form the bulk of our new piece of fabric for the cushion cover. So, you've got a sleeve there. I cut the cuff off as well. Now, super important, don't throw these away. Keep these. These look great, appliqued onto the cushion. If you want to do that, that's great. And it, for me, it um, adds a bit of history and it talks about the, where the cushion came from, where the design came from. And it just, it's a bit of a nod to the history of the fabric. So I always keep them. I keep the collars as well, I do that. So I'll keep them there. Then, so you've got this part of the um, sleeve. You need to just cut this seam. And then you've got a nice, you've really got quite a big piece of fabric there, which is what we're going to use next. Right, so once you've got your sleeve, and do this with each sleeve of the shirts you've got, uh, get ready to cut them into strips. Now, the strips you're going to cut them into do not need to be perfectly the um, same width. They can be at a different angle. So as long as they've got a straight edge, they can go from quite wide to quite narrow. When we sew them together. The, the more acute the angle, that'll make some of the patterns that we generate more interesting. So don't worry if you've got an awkward part of the sleeve. So this piece here, for example, is always going to be a slightly different angle. So it's a question of using your cutting ruler, rotary cutter, and cutting a strip like that. Now, when you get to this bit, there's this little buttony kind of thing here. So just kind of trim around that. And then when you've got, if you've done it like that, you can chop that bit off and you've still got a strip there that you can use. Discard that bit for the time being. So cut a series of these strips. And you can use this one I'm make slightly straighter, but that's, that's fine. And then down here you've got that. And then just on the, sometimes on the edge where you cut, the shirt, you just need to make that straight. So, that's those strips done. Now I will of course put my um, rotary cutter blade away for safety purposes, and you will be left with a series of strips, which are more or less the same length. Now, repeat this for each sleeve, 
your fat quarter and yeah you'll have a series of different strips they'll all have straight edges but they'll be slightly at different angles now we're going to sew these together so really it's up to you on how you want to um, put your fabric don't worry about being uniform but try to avoid obviously putting the same fabric next to one another so i kind of just do it how i feel and the idea is that we want to produce a, effectively a new piece of fabric something like that where you've got a series of strips so here i've just alternated between the blue and the yellow and then i've put the pinky purpley check in a little bit less often but you can do it how you want so right sides together and a quarter inch thin and very simply you have now got two pieces of fabric joined together repeat that keep adding strips you can press these as you go if you want but if you've pressed the fabric beforehand i'll join a load of these strips together and then i'll press the whole piece rather than pressing individually i chain pieces as these as i go so um you can just um move that and then um, start sewing again you, you soon get into a um, routine of um, making these strips. So now you've got quite a long piece of fabric. So now, depending on the size cushion cover you want to make, uh, you'll obviously need to create more fabric like this. I use a fairly standard um, size cushion. I think it's about 46 centimeters square. So you just need to plan roughly how much you're going to make. But of course, what you can do, if you make too much, you can keep the six inch blocks that we're going to make shortly and put them into a different quilt. So nothing will go to waste. We're now going to cut the fabric. Now this is the, um, fundamental to the process really. So what you need to do, take your rotary cutter, get your quilting ruler, and I try and make a cut. Now don't worry about the cut, you want it to be fairly um, random, but I try and make it the length of the ruler because then when we join it's the other pieces, the lengths are all the same, so it's easier to join. So it's a question of getting your ruler. And a nice straight cut, and then, oops, if you get any snags like that, it's not a problem, just take your scissors and just trim them. So, and then you can pivot this piece of fabric and you'll soon, you'll, you'll soon get an idea of how you want to cut it. So I like to create different angles by cutting at quite acute angles. So you can, because um, this makes the patterns more interesting later. Put that to the side. And then of course you can, you know, you can flip it around completely. So you get start, you'll, you'll start to get some horizontals in as well. Let's try and make that cut there. Now, what you can also do at this point is, if you've got, like me, if your pieces weren't, ex if your strips weren't exactly the same length, you might have this kind of um, bit here. So all I'll do here is I'll just square that off. And I'll try and as well, I'll try and get the maximum length out of it. So I'll be sure to um, cut as near to the edge as I can. Bits like this. So these little scraps, keep these for a different project. A piece like this can come in super useful because when we cut the six inch blocks um, sometimes they won't be big enough and you'll you'll be desperate for a piece to add on and that's what these pieces are for they just they, they just don't know it yet so yeah you'll have a series of these different shaped pieces the task then is to look at them and think what's going to join to what now if you've cut them all to circa 24 inches then it should make life easier so take an edge like this a length like that and then yeah so I'm going to join that to that it's not exactly the right in fact that's probably better so I'm going to join that edge to that edge because what you want these bits here where the different strips start to intersect is what we're after so you can't really go wrong at this point but obviously don't join what you just cut but so we're going to sew that to that right sides together and then to the machine 
And again, you're gonna set up with a quarter inch seam and just, yeah, join them together. Now the seams won't behave because, you know, they've, um, there's a lot of them. So where you can, you can keep them flat, but just sew over them. Don't worry too much about that. Because if the seams get too bulky, we'll just trim them off the back anyway. So we, we don't need to worry too much about kind of nesting seams or things being perfect on the back. No one's going to see the back. Unless you show them. So, yeah, super. So we've joined that. And then what we'll do is we'll repeat that. So we'll take another piece. Now you might think, well, actually, that is going to match there. So you could, you could put that there quite easily. That can go on there, or you can take the other piece we've got and join that. So the, the beauty of this kind of improv technique is that to try and piece this using a more traditional method, you're not going to be able to do it, or it'll take like forever. So this, the beauty of this process is the kind of random happy accidents that it generates. So what we'll see later as well, when we cut this into a block, you can get some really interesting patterns that you just couldn't plan. So. It's a, it's a kind of a much freer technique. And you can, you can cut and repeat this process as many times as you want. But obviously as you do it, the seams will get bulkier. So you'll find there's an optimum point where it's, it looks nice and improvisational and there's not too much bulk on the back. I always think as well, it's nice if you've got like a long straight edge like that of one fabric to join it where you've got all the different kind of rows going into it. So yeah, this is this piece, as I say, I like the, the juxtaposition of these long straight pieces versus these pieces going into it. So, you know, you can experiment with how you like joining them. So you've now got these two pieces of fabric and what we're going to do, we'll give them a quick press along the seam that you've just made and then we're going to cut it again. Having pressed the new piece of fabric, again, you're going to take your um, ruler and rotary cutter and we're going to cut again a 24 inch length through the piece and you'll get another couple of pieces. Now you could on this piece, because these um, rows here are quite uniform, you might just want to cut through those. So that's fine. And if you get like a nice kind of different angle, you'll get some really interesting effects. Then you can start experimenting with how, what you're going to do next. So you could, that piece could join there to there. That piece can go down there and remember you've got this piece as well so you don't have it doesn't have to be the same piece you can just take this piece and join that to there so really it's, it's quite random in its uh, nature so you can see where i've inserted that kind of wedge shape piece it's starting to get some really interesting shapes like that little square there for example try piecing that uh, in a traditional way i couldn't do it so um you know, if people can, then that's up to them. But this generates some really interesting patterns. Uh, the other thing to mention is lots of different bias stuff going on with your fabric. So at this point, you might think, well, it's not lying flat. Don't worry about that. It's fine. Give it a press. And then at the later stage, when we baste it and when we quilt it, we'll, it'll, it will lie flat because we'll, we're going to machine quilt it. We're going to hand quilt it as well. So it's going to have a lot of quilting in. So don't worry if it doesn't lie flat and look perfect at this stage. In fact, never worry about perfect. The next stage is to create your six inch blocks. Now, the truth of the matter is, I create six inch blocks because I've got a six inch quilt ruler. If you want smaller blocks, that's absolutely fine. If you've got one of the 10 inch ones, that's cool as well. And of course, it'll depend on what you're making. So we're doing a cushion cover today, but this technique could absolutely work for a, a full size quilt. You just make more blocks and, you know, the, you'll, if you do smaller blocks, like three inch ones, then you will get some really interesting effects, but um, you, the seams will be bulkier as well. So I go for this project, I'm using six inch squares. Lay your new piece of fabric flat and have a, now this is a, if you think, well, hang on a minute, that bit looks boring and that's just going to be some rows. Don't worry, just cut and a bit that you think will look interesting. So again, don't be too precious about this because when we've cut them and turned them into blocks, we can always move them around. So you, this, this, this isn't the final kind of 
design you'll be left with. So position that you want to get maximum value for your blocks as well. So a nice cut there. And then we'll flip that round. And cut again. So you'll then have a nice piece of fabric six inches wide. And then it is a question of just chopping these into blocks. Again, it won't lie perfectly flat, but don't worry. Give it a press if you want, because that will help, but don't worry. So if you've got a straight edge, you can, you can absolutely use that. So our first block. If you notice on your blocks a bit of the fabric overhanging like that, just cut it off, it's absolutely fine. Just get it out of the way. So there you're gonna have three blocks. And this is when you can start to have position them and try different layouts. But again, don't worry too much, trust in the process and yeah, it'll work. So we're gonna create six more blocks and then we're gonna sew those together. So some blocks haven't got any of the, the check-in. That's absolutely fine. It's nice to have one that hasn't got that, that pink in. Now, uh, we're not quite gonna get a six inch square there. Well, maybe we will if we haven't. It's gonna be close on this one, but just cut it anyway. And then, like that, because if you, you, you've only got a tiny bit, if you wanted, take a scrap and you can, just, you can just fix that and add that to that and then just trim it. So if it's close, that's what I'll do. I mean, with this one as well, depending on your seam allowance, you might, you might, that might get hidden in the seam anyway. Or what you can do is if you're super organized, then you could have that as one of your outer blocks and then when you're creating a cushion cover that bit will definitely get hidden so again don't worry too much about it if it isn't absolutely perfectly square as long as it's more or less there it'll be fine right so that's six made so now this is the super fun bit so get your blocks that you've made and this is where you can start thinking about how you're going to lay them out in your final design so I like that one, I particularly like that one that hasn't got the pink, so I'd probably put that in the middle. And in, in terms of fabric choices, I like contrast. I think contrast is super important in quilting and in, in like most art really. So I try to choose a plain, a stripe and a check, or if I haven't got one of those, then I'll, I'll find like a floral um, which I love using. So if you use a floral, there's so many different kind of scales you can experiment with. A big floral looks great because you get, it kind of goes a little bit abstracty and equally a kind of ditzy smaller print looks cool as well because it contrasts really nicely with the more graphic nature of the, the check or the stripe. So use what you've got and you, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll figure out what choices you like. But as I say, I like contrast, but equally, if you have got free check shirts and you could use those as well because they will look great but if there's a bit of a difference in scale so much the better because that will look really cool take your blocks we're going to press them so just try to don't read too much if they don't lie flat now so this bit here i can see that this bit here is going to be a pain it's not going to lie flat you can already see there's fabric behind it so you can just let's just get rid of that and move on with life and that's fine so it's a question of just pressing all of these you will find as well, I like to use different weights of fabric. So I'll use corduroy, I'll use furnishing fabric, I'll use all sorts of different fabric. And it, it sometimes creates a little bit of a, a buckle, but again, don't worry too much because you can just encourage it a little bit and then press it. And then once it's quilted, once it's basted and then quilted, you're not even, it's not even gonna be a problem. And if at this point, as you go through them, you're looking at them and you think, well, actually that one, one of them's a bit 
not as exciting as you'd like, then just use some of these scraps from before and create a new one. It's still fine, there's nothing to stop you doing that. And you can keep that block for a different project if you like. Sometimes I sit and I make loads of these. It's quite cathartic just sitting and sewing strips and cutting them. It's quite a nice process and before you know it, you'll have like a enough for a small quilt. If you think you, if you, think you can use a whole shirt, two whole shirts and a fat quarter, that is an awful lot of blocks. We've only used the sleeves of two shirts, so you'll get a ton of blocks and you'll, you'll easily make a quilt. You could even make a matching quilt and cushion. So back to the layout. Now, I remember that that one went in the middle, but I mean, I'm kind of okay with how, however I lay it out. And you might have had second thoughts because they do look slightly different once they're pressed flat. So then it is a question of joining them together. So you can do a, just like a column at a time. So right sides together and a quarter inch seam. If the seam is too bulky, you either trim it or just use your machine, just encourage it and it will just manipulate the fabric so it sits flat. And I'll chain piece these. So when I talk about chain piecing, what I mean is not not sewing each block individually. So it just it just saves time really if you sew them and keep them on the same piece of thread. So do one and then just keep sewing, um, you'll save thread and it, you'll save time as well. So it's just um, a different technique that quilters use. So if, if people ever talk about chain piecing, that's what it is. Because if you think on some quilts, you're gonna sew an awful lot of blocks together, then it's just a quicker way of doing it. So we've got our two joined together. I'll just snip those apart. Going back to our layout, that was there. That will be there. And you know, you can still adjust at this point. You don't need to worry, you've changed your mind. Things like that happen. See, this is interesting because I might, I probably will keep that together because I quite like it when you've got quite a big expanse of one thing. You can see it's, it's almost perfectly aligned, but it's not quite, and that'll just make it interesting to look at. So you have your three, three columns now. Yeah, it's really coming together now. So then it's a question of sewing these together uh, again, quarter inch seam. And then if you wanted, before you sewed these, you could probably press these seams just to make it a little bit easier to sew. But you can see that it's starting to come together now. And there we have the basis of the cushion cover. So lots of interesting bits to look at already I've seen. So that yellow triangle in there around all those different shades, shade, that tiny piece there, good luck piece in that. Um, Again, that yellow triangle, all these different bits, the way that these two pieces come together. Yeah, I'm super pleased with that. This bit here, we've got these super small pieces happening. So if you think, if you'd have cut this again, you'd get more and more of that, but you have to balance that versus the bulkiness of the seams. So we will look at the back. It does look messy. These bits here, if it really, really offends you, then you can just trim them off because Ultimately, it is a cushion cover. You're going to be using it, so you don't want anything too lumpy and bumpy. But this is going to be fine because you think it's going to be quilted. It will have wadding as well in between. Now, we're going to press this, and then we're going to baste it, and then it's time to quilt it. So this, the wadding is, I think it's a, an 80-20 cotton poly mix. You can kind of, for this, it's great. If you've got any scraps of wadding, you can join them together and just create like a Frankenstein piece of wadding. So basting is, effectively the temporary joining of the patchwork to the wadding before you quilt it. So traditionally you might, some people use uh, big tacking stitches, uh, otherwise people can, some people pin it or some people spray it. Now I'm a spray person so just because it's quicker. So obviously read the instructions, make sure you're in a well ventilated space etc and be safe with this. You don't need a lot of it so I just kind of fold it back about halfway and then a super light spray. All you're doing really is just encouraging it to, 
to lay flat whilst you're going to quilt it. So then it's on, let's get it nice and flat. And again, don't worry too much if you get a couple of creases, they will press out or they will quilt out, they will disappear. Flip it round. And it will only go, when you fold it back, it will only go as far as you've kind of sprayed and basted anyway. So you aren't going to miss, you're not going to miss anything. Position it and then just smooth it flat. So that's basted sufficiently now for me to start quilting it. I like to mix machine and hand quilting. Um, machine quilting is great. It's really, it's super quick and gives a really nice, texture so for my machine quilting i will use a different thread weight so you can experiment with thread weights so this is a 50 weight so it's relatively fine i use this for piecing but you can absolutely use it for machine quilting this is a 28 weight so it is a bit thicker and you might think well hang on a minute you're not going to see the difference but you absolutely will when you quilt it so you can kind of see the difference and then this this is the 12 weight. So I use, you can use the 12 weight in the machine, but today I'm gonna to use it for hand quilting. So I like to mix in all three. You can get an 80 weight as well, which is even finer than the 50. And that adds a, a beautifully subtle texture. So it's, it's just a question of what you've got and how you wanna have a go at it. But I like machine quilting and I like my stitches showing. So I'll probably have a quite a long stitch length, certainly three or four, and then, to mark my um, lines, I'll use some sellotape. I'll take some of the tack off, tackiness off it, just by kind of pressing it on my jeans or something, just to get it, to make it more like masking tape effectively. Just use masking tape, I didn't have any. And then I just kind of position that corner to corner. I should have cut it slightly longer, but you'll be able to judge it. Now you can use, you can use one of those pens, a fabric pen, or you can use chalk, or some people use one of those um, paper folders and you can kind of almost score a line and it, it, it presses out. I, I just use uh, sellotape just because it's easier and you can reuse it and move it. So I've put the 28 weight on the machine and I kept the bobbin the same, that's fine because you're not going to see the back. And then it is a question, I've put the stitch length to four and so then it's just a question of quilting it. Now I'll roughly follow the sellotape. And we have our first line. So compared to the sellotape, but we have a little bit of a wonkiness here, but that's fine because if you think we're gonna do a few of these and then we're gonna go the other way and cross hatch effectively, you're not gonna notice it. And it isn't about having perfect straight lines. So once I've done the first line, I've gone probably the width of the sellotape again. So I'll, I'll, I'll try and recreate that. I like the orange contrast against the blue and the yellow. You, you're definitely gonna notice this quilting. So. For me, I like that. So then I'll take my sellotape. And then I'll just, I kind of, I do this by eye, so I'll kind of estimate where the next, where I want my next line. The sellotape will eventually get to a point where you have to use the new bit because it, it stops sticking completely. Now for these bits here in the corners, you, I, I'll probably just do this by eye because it's only the longer lines that need a bit more guidance. And you, once you've done a few, you'll, you'll, you'll be fine with um, gauging where to quilt. So that's one side of the quilting done. So what I'll probably do now is I might change my thread and I might, I'll might i kind of do some cross hatching. So again, I might put a lighter weight thread on just to create a bit of texture and visual interest. Yeah. So you can already see that this, the line of the turquoise is much finer than the, the orange 28 weight and you can, you'll start, you'll see that. And so at different points, you'll see the orange, but you won't see the turquoise, but then you wear it on the, the plane, you obviously will. Yeah, super. So you could, if you wanted with the turquoise, you could absolutely start, you could go in between these gaps again and you could make the turquoise more dense 
um, in terms of the amount of stitches you're using, the amount of quilting you're adding. But I'm, I'm kind of happy with the, the width I've got there and the, the kind of grid that that's about to form. So that's the, the turquoise quilting done. And as, as I mentioned earlier, you can see now that it's starting to lie a lot flatter and it's starting to be a lot more uniform in its shape. The other thing to mention is when I'm doing this, it's, it always makes life easier if you leave about a couple of centimetres around the edge of the wadding, just so that you can start off the wadding and finish off the wadding. If, you were, if you'd cut this exactly flush, then you're gonna start having problems at some of the edges. So it's just easier to give yourself a starting point and a finishing point, because we're gonna trim this anyway. So all these, all these kind of um, loose threads will all go, and they'll all get trimmed off. So that's the next stage, is now to trim it. Do this using either your scissors or your rotary cutter. I'll use scissors because it's just probably more straightforward. So again, trimming nice and close to the edge. Probably leave like a five mil gap around the edge. We've got almost finished our cushion cover top. Now we're going to add some hand quilting. So for this, I will use the 12 weight. It's a bit, it's a bit thicker and you'll be able to see the stitches. So now when you're doing hand quilting, you can, you can add a quick quilter's knot if you want at the bottom, at the end, or you can just leave it. I'll, I'll quickly just tie like a very simple knot like that. And that's, that's kind of fine because you're not going to be pulling at it. So now I'll start anywhere. Um, I like to add three different stitches. So I like, I like a classic kind of quilting stitch where I'll just go in, come up, go in, come up. And when I'm doing this, I like to, you know, I can, I like to sew with the TV on and just take it easy. And I'll kind of just um, let the stitches go in the direction they, they want really. And I'll head toward different parts. I won't often work to a pattern you can see that you could, you know, you can make this go wherever you want across the quilt. I do like to go across the other stitches. But quilting something like this by hand is so much, is such a great opportunity to experiment with the threads you've got and different ideas. And you know, you can, you, you can, you can get through it pretty quickly. Now, I've tried using a quilting hoop. I didn't get on with it. I've tried using the thimble. I didn't get on with it. It's really a matter of preference. Whatever, whatever it takes, really. If you're someone that's proficient at hand quilting, then, you know, stick to what works for you. You can see the three different weights of thread. So you've got the, the 50, the orange and the 28, and then the, the, the kind of royal blue and the, the 12. And I also like the that you can tell it's hand quilted. It isn't as straight as the machine quilting. You can tell it's been done by hand, which is a nice contrast. So I'll just kind of meander this up toward the top. And then to finish, what I'd usually, do, well, I'll just go through the other side, pull it through, and then I'll just, on the back, I'll just do a couple of kind of stitches that are just in the wadding, something like that. and then that will hold it. That's absolutely fine to hold it. But I like to do a, a, like a little cross stitch. So you come up through your cushion cover, then back in and then back out there. And then that's the start of the cross. Just go back in and then again, you can just meander along. I'll do, I'll do one here. So I just like, this is very kind of random in its application and in the size of the crosses. You, you can, I don't like to do them too big. You can go nice and small and you can, you can change the kind of angle they're at and stuff. And again, you'll just find that as you quilt, you'll find your way across the patch, the, the cushion cover. You can, you can obviously change direction if you need to. I love adding these crosses. I always, on most of my quilts, I've got a, a load of crosses at a different point. And it, for me, again, that just starts to add a third layer 
of texture. So you've got the patchwork itself, then you've got the machine quilting, then you've got the hand quilting. And I just think the, all those three things combined start making it look really interesting. Because from a distance, you probably won't see a lot of these stitches. It'll only be close up that you see them. And to some degree that you'll, you'll probably feel them as well when you sat next to your, quilt, uh, your cushion. So what you can do, if you don't want to just tie a knot, you can do a little quilter's knot. So, now this is super fun. Um, so, thread your needle and then take your needle and thread, press the thread against it and wrap it around a couple of times. Then, pinching that there, pull it all the way down and you are left with a little quilter's knot. So, this next stitch, as I say, is like a, it's kind of like a little bird foot stitch. And I like it because it's like a little chevron. So you go, you come through, back in and out the top. And then that gives you your arrow and then you can head off in whatever direction you want, really. So you can, you know, you can make them as big as or as small as you want. It just depends where you come out. So if you come out a bit further away, you're going to get a bigger stitch. But these, again, I'd like to add a few of these. I think that green works really well with that blue. It's a, it's a really interesting colour combination. It's nice as well, I think, if where you've got two fabrics joining, I'll put the start of the stitch in one and then I'll go into the other. And you kind of, by doing that, at least to my mind, you're creating a, 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 almost like a, a visual join between the things. So the pattern, whilst it's still quite jarring with the stripe versus the plane, there is that thing, there is the, the stitch breaking up a little bit. But really with this quilting, it's kind of how you want to do it. If you want to be super, super structured and super formal, you can absolutely do these in straight lines or, you know, however you want. You'll, once you've done a few, you just find your way and just, um, there's a ton of different stitches you can use. You can put French knots into it. Um, there's loads of different stitches. You could stitch words into your quilt. You could, you know, you could draw onto your quilt and then follow that. That's quite a nice way of doing it because it just gives you a bit of a pattern to follow. Whereas I like just to um, be a little bit more free flowing and just put them where um, they kind of take me. Now they are the three main quilting stitches that I use. So you might want to put a few more down here and you can be completely abstract with this and you can even, you, can, you know, you don't have to use these colours, you can put more on, you can put whatever you want on. I have used um, stuff like sock yarn and pearl cotton for quilting because you get some really big chunky stitches that way. Um, you should look at hand, you can hand tie a quilt as well. So that's an interesting way of adding texture where effectively you put, an, you put a knot in and you've got the, the, two, the two tails on the front, which looks really good. Now, at start, we, when we deconstructed the shirt, we took the two shirt halves, the front of the shirts, and joined them together. So this is now going to form the back of the cushion cover because the buttonholes have already been done. And I'm no good at buttonholes, so that works for me. So what you need to do, so you'll have made this. I've made this the just under 45 centimeters square. So what you're gonna do is place that on, onto the shirt front. And what you need to do is roughly gauge the middle, because you want this down, well, you don't have to have it down the middle, but to get the width of the fabric, you probably need it more or less in the middle. And you also don't want the top button too close to the edge. So, that can move up a little bit. It's probably going to be just underneath that button. And then, of course, what you must remember to do is at least undo one of the buttons so that when we turn it around, you can get into it to turn it around. Place that in position. And this is good because the shirts are quite big shirts. I think they may have been extra large. So, if it's a smaller shirt and you haven't got room, all you need to do is sew a bit onto it it's fine it looks it looks good and it's still a nod to this was once a shirt or a couple of shirts then i'll pin this which is rare for me but i'll just pin it so it makes sewing it around the edges easier i won't put loads in but just a few pins just to make life a little bit easier for myself then it's a question of sewing 
quarter inch seam again around the edge. So just be, sh just double check that where you've trimmed it, that you're not gonna go like there, for example. I could have probably trimmed that a bit tighter. So on this side, I'll just, I'll be sure to go inside of it. Like I said earlier, I like my cushions to be quite plump when they've, they've got the insert in. So as long as you're within a couple of centimeters, there's always gonna be a bit of give with this kind of thing. So all this fabric that you trim off, you should absolutely keep because you could use it in um, loads of other quilting projects. Then I'll usually just snip those little cornery bits, maybe make a little snip into it just so it makes the corner a little bit sharper. Then just trim any excess fabric. Now, if you wanted, rather than having this um, raw back as the inner of the cushion, you could, you could line it and I say line it, all you do is put a, a, another piece of fabric over this when you're quilting it and just do that. So it just isn't as uh, rough and ready, but you know, it's a cushion cover, so it doesn't matter too much. So being sure to take all the pins out. The next stage is to take your, get your cushion insert. Now you can, you can get these in loads of different shops, loads of different sizes. So this is a fairly standard one, uh, about 45 centimeters square. So we're going to turn the new cushion cover out. Uh, if you've got one of those um, pokey tools, you can poke the corners out of it, but otherwise you can just you kind of use your finger. It's absolutely fine. Just to make sure the corner's okay. Then undo the buttons, the rest of the buttons, just to enable. So now on this one, I could have perhaps that button, I could have shifted it that way a little bit because you can see that that button, the distance there is a little bit shorter than the distance there. But you know, it's, it's, not, it's not that bad. And it'll, the main thing is it'll work as a cushion cover. So undo that button. And it's a question of just inserting your cushion. So you can encourage it into the corners. Encourage it to go down a bit. And then it's just a question of doing up the buttons. Now, this is going to be quite plump, so I could have perhaps made it the initial patchwork a little bit bigger, but I think it looks better plumper than saggy, in my opinion. And there's the back. Now, I, I like the contrast in back. I think that looks pretty cool. Um, and it still shows that it references the shirts that you've used. And so it acts as a bit of a memory as well. So, you know, if these are your shirts and you've, whatever occasion you've worn them on, but they've become too worn to wear, then this is a great way of keeping them for posterity. And there's the front. So yeah, super. So things I talked about earlier, this little triangle here, there's, there's, it'd be really hard to plan that and to come up with that as a, a design. So where you trust in the process, you get these different shapes. And then you can see where we've added the quilting and the texture. And that's a, that's a finished cushion cover made from two old shirts and the fat quarter that I had lying around, embellished with machine quilting, different weights, and then added some extra hand quilting. Ready for use. As mentioned, I've used a couple of shirts. Now, I love to go to charity shops to get shirts. You can get so many different um, types of shirt. You can, you can always get stripes and checks, but you can get plain ones. I also occasionally will wander into the women's section and get summer dresses. Summer dresses with big florals on are perfect for this kind of thing. Um, so that's cool. And really, I'd encourage you to try charity shops and try different sources. Uh, car boot sales are amazing. You can get some super cool vintage fabrics or older fabrics. Have a go at using them, old curtains, anything really. Have a go, see how you find it. And yeah, that's the, that is the cushion cover. So the technique I use to make this cushion cover, um, creating using the improv strip piecing, is the same technique that I've used on my quilt here. So here we've got six inch square blocks. On this one, you can see that on the, with these colours, I've used like three inch square blocks and probably a few more fabrics. I've incorporated some of this brown floral from this fabric, so I had some scraps left over, so I incorporated that. And it's the same technique for this piece up here, although I've gone back to the six inch squares for this. So you can see that once you can make the, the blocks, then you can really, you can make an entire quilt using this technique. So if you think you use a couple of shirts, you'd, you'd easily get a pretty big quilt. Uh, and it would all look like this, which would look amazing.
and then you could, you could absolutely put a border on and you could start mixing in other shirts as well or any other clothes, old clothes, old fabric you've got just to create something that's super interesting. You can see as well, I've added some big stitch hand quilts in. Just so this quilt is entirely hand quilted. Um, again, just by hand, quilted by hand. And um, I've got the crosses that I've talked about and then the kind of classic quilting running stitch as well. Uh, other points of interest, still got the labeling from the shirt, which I like because I think that just adds a bit of, again, it adds context that this was once a shirt, or part of this quilt was once a shirt, so the label has made it in. And yeah, I look at this and I can remember the shirts that were in here and different where I was working and stuff like that, so it kind of acts as a bit of a, um, a memory aid and just you can think back to what you were doing and all that kind of stuff. 